It's time I pay a little homage to my Hogwarts house. Hey y'all, welcome back to Dots and Beyond. My name is Beth, and let's jump right into this October work journal setup. For supplies, I'm using five different pens. I have a .05 Black Pigma Micron, a Uniball Signo Gold Gel Pen, a Black Tombow Dual Brush Pen, and another in Dark Green, as well as a White Jelly Roll to assist with touching up any mistakes. I also scrounged up every stencil I own that has circles or circle patterns. My journal is the North Star Journal from Archer & Olive. Pick up your own journal or other high quality journaling supplies from Archer & Olive with the link in the description box below. I have wanted to do a serpent slash Slytherin theme for a long time, and since my personal journal this month is all about the head of Gryffindor House, I felt this would be a good compliment. Again, this is my work journal, which has undergone a transformation this year and is in the middle of another one since I started a new job. If you are following this series, I have added a little to my dashboard, but I have mostly been buried in corporate training videos, so flushing out my work organization system is going to take some more time. Here on the cover, I am drawing a singular serpent who will bleed across to the next spread. Like many of the work journal setups, I'm using the same trick of putting down the gold gel pen first and then filling in with the color after. Speaking of color, I do add in a touch of green for the nod to Slytherin as opposed to sticking with just the black and gold, which is my usual. At the head of my serpent, the first letter of the October header is also a sun. The companion moon will be on the next spread at the tail. I am also embellishing the pages with various tidbits of circle art. You will see me jump from circles to the serpent and back again as I allow gel pen to dry in certain areas in order to lessen the opportunity for smudging, though I still get a few smudges in here and there. I also had no interest in drawing every single serpent scale, so I dropped in a few along strategic locations of the body so they are present but not overwhelming in the entire drawing. Serpents have more ties to mythology and symbolism than just about any other creature. Because of its ability to shed its skin and start anew, it is often considered to represent rebirth or new beginning, much like the phoenix from my September setup. Let's learn a little about its most modern mythology. Slytherin House, of course, is one of the four houses of Hogwarts School of Witchcraft and Wizardry from the Harry Potter book series and now Global Empire. Created by J.K. Rowling, here are some words from the prefect of Wizarding World's Slytherin House, Gemma Farley. Our emblem is the serpent, the wisest of creatures. Our house colors are emerald green and silver, and our common room lies behind a concealed entrance down in the dungeons. Now, there are a few things you should know about Slytherin, and a few you should forget. Firstly, let's dispel a few myths. You might have heard rumors about Slytherin House, that we're all into the dark arts and will only talk to you if your great-grandfather was a famous wizard and rubbish like that. While you don't want to believe everything you hear from competing houses, I'm not denying that we've produced our share of dark wizards, but so have the other three houses. They just don't like admitting it. And yes, we have traditionally tended to take students who come from long lines of witches and wizards but nowadays you'll find plenty of people in Slytherin House who have at least one muggle parent. Here's a little known fact. Merlin was a Slytherin. Yes, Merlin himself, the most famous wizard in history. We're not bad people. We're like our emblem, the snake. Sleek, powerful, and frequently misunderstood. Salazar Slytherin looked for the seeds of greatness in his chosen students. We have been chosen by this house because we have the potential to be great, in the true sense of the word. With the serpent on the page, I will finish off the header with a simple block font with thickened downstrokes. This is mostly hand-drawn, though I do use a ruler for the straight edges. As stated, our serpent will transition to the next spread, which is going to be my calendar. She will slide across the bottom and then up the right side almost like a frame. Otherwise, the methods are the same. Gold gel outline first and then coloring in with either the black or green.
Question of the day, are you afraid of snakes? I am not, though I have a healthy respect for them. I had plenty of serpent encounters growing up in Kenya of both the venomous and non-venomous variety. It's the American ones I'm wary of because I'm not confident in identifying the difference between those which are harmless and those which can kill. Except for the rattlesnake because they come with their own warning system. While some of the gel pen from both snake and circles dries, I'm going to jot in the calendar. This month I'm using a mini calendar style of three spaces square for each day. I considered building a spread to track all the training I'm doing this month, but that is auto calculated in the training system and I see no need for the double work. Here I can indicate important dates or meetings to the right of the calendar and jot any necessary notes below. Since all my other circles were quite precise, I did use the stencil to draw rows of circles down for the meetings area, which is something I would normally freehand. Then I'm adding the moon to the top right corner with the serpent's tail. By the end of October, I will be done with formal training and the sun can set on that chapter. September has been a rough month. I took a few days off between jobs and immediately landed a double ear infection that knocked me down for days. Absolutely do not recommend. But then again, it wasn't the COVID and for that I am grateful. Still, it is one of the reasons this video is a little late this week. Wouldn't it be great if I had a way to tell you? If you have not subscribed, and most of you haven't, please consider hitting that subscribe button below. I am so close to a thousand subscribers and I would love to add that community tab to my channel so I can drop little tidbits of information about me or upcoming videos into your subscription feed. You can also find links to all the other dots and beyond socials and my favorite bullet journaling supplies in the description box below. Okay, let's finish coloring in this snake. When coloring with the Tombow dual brush pens, I find that two or three layers works best, though I try to keep it to two. I'll color the first layer in a singular direction and then switch directions for the second layer to eliminate some of the streaky marker look. I almost turned to paint for this setup, but I'm still trying to keep the work journal a bit more simplified than my personal journal. A few final touches and touch ups, and it's time for a simplified event dashboard. It's also apparently time to switch fandoms and give some attention to Faramir, one half of the dots and beyond felines. Eowyn is around here somewhere, but far less needy. For those who may be new to the channel, I do work in the event industry. As I start wrapping up learning a new software system and policies and procedures for my new organization, I'll start inheriting clients at a rather rapid clip as we are understaffed. For this spread, it was important for me to start tracking what clients have been assigned, the date of their event, estimated food and beverage, and if they already have a contract on file. On the right side, I'm tracking the date I introduce myself as their new event manager, check E for email or P for phone, and then make any notes about that initial contact. Subsequent pages will be unformatted and simple daily logs for now. That's it for the Slytherin setup. Yes, yes, well done Slytherin, well done Slytherin. You can follow my Slytherin Common Room playlist or one for your own house from the links in the description box. For November, I anticipate a more comprehensive dashboard working productivity system, such as those I had for July and August. Make sure you come back to see how that evolves. Thank you for watching, and I will see you next week. Here are a couple more videos I think you might enjoy.